Hello again and welcome to English with Model. In this specific video, I'm going to talk about one of the question types of writing task to essay. As you all know, I don't know if you've watched my previous videos, but I have already covered the opinion essays. In this specific video, I'm going to cover a second type of writing task two, and that's the discussion essays. I'm going to talk about every single step. I will be elucidating, explaining, and highlighting the tip, you know, the top tips of this particular question type. I want you to stick around to the, to the end of the video as you will not get bored. You will actually, you know, um, capture a lot of information. You will discover a lot of new, new things, and especially for the candidates, for the IELTS candidates who always struggle to score high in the writing task. Why? Because you don't know the strategy. In this specific video, you will, you will know exactly what strategy that you need to follow in order to score seven plus in the writing task. So please don't go away and watch the video till the end. Let's see. So I'm going now to share the screen with you to show you how to plan and write IELTS discussion essays. <clears throat> so as you can see, students can find it difficult to identify IELTS discussion essays and often confuse them with either opinion essays or advantage and disadvantage essays. This is one of the issues I will be covering in this lesson. I'm also going to show you how to plan and write discussion essays step by step. So the first part of the question for an IELTS discussion essay will be a statement containing two opposing views. You will then be asked to discuss both sides of the argument and give your own opinion. Here is some typical wording that might be used. So how do we, do we recognize IELTS discussion essays? How, how do you identify that this specific question is a discussion essay? How do you find out? So if you come across to one of these questions, then you will have to understand that you are, a go, you are about to write the IELTS discussion essay type. So you will have to follow the structure of this specific type. So the first question that you might come across is discuss by the views and give your own opinion or discuss by the views and then give your own opinion or discuss both sides of this argument and give your own opinion. Okay, so I, now here is the question from a paper, you know, from, from a past test paper. It says some people think that zoos are cruel and should be closed down. Others, however, believe that zoos can be useful in protecting wild animals. Discuss both of you and give your own opinion or give your opinion. So as you can see in the question, even if you don't need the question, by the way, I can find out that this question is a discussion essay. How? Because we have two opposing views. And the question says, discuss both the views. So when you have both views in the actual question, that means you have two different views or two opposing views. As you can see, the first part of the question here is not supporting the zoos. It says that the zoos are cruel, cruel and should be closed down. And the other view, which is the opposing view, it says it's supporting actually the zoos by saying that zoos can be useful in protecting wild animals. So, so as you can see, we have two opposing views. Okay, now, and as you can see, we always have this statement given with the question, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience and write at least 250 words. So don't forget this, you have to write at least 250 words. If you actually write, if you, were, if you are in short of words, you might score low. Okay, so you have to be careful. So I will be using this question to guide you through the process 
of planning and writing an IELTS discussion essay. The key to identify this type of question is the fact that you are required to discuss both views, as I mentioned earlier. So this is different to opinion questions where you must decide between two opposing views and make an argument to support your own opinion. For example, in the opinion essays, um, it's also known as agree or disagree essays, it generally worded in one of these ways. For example, what is your opinion? Do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? So discussion essays is different from opinion essays. So you will need to be cautious and try to differ between these two, okay? So I, the other essay type that students mistake for discussion essays is, is, is advantages and disadvantages essays. With this, the statement will contain just one view and the question will typically be written as shown in the sample question. For example, school children are using computers in school more than ever. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this and give your own opinion. So you can't. You can't confuse discussion essays with advantages and disadvantages essay, or even with opinion essays because they're quite different. In the advantages and disadvantages essay, you have one single view, but this specific view has some advantages and disadvantages. So you will have to actually talk about both or like elucidate or elaborate on both, okay? But discussion essays, we have two opposing views that are mentioned in the actual question. So, the consequence of incorrectly identifying the question type is that you will use the wrong structure for your essay. This is a major reason why people make the mistakes we'll now look at. So three common mistakes. These three errors are common in IELTS discussion essays. So you will lose marks if you don't state your opinion. You will also lose marks if you don't give arguments for both views and also if you don't develop both sides of the arguments equally. So in this specific question, I know they're asking about your opinion, but you will still have to actually tackle every single view separately. So the first body paragraph will be about one of the, of the, view, of the views, and the second body paragraph will be about the opposing view. Get it? You can mention your opinion in the introduction and restate that in your conclusion, but this wouldn't affect the structure of your essay. If you stick to one single view, then you are turning or you are transforming the question type into opinion essay, and that wouldn't make sense at all, okay? So the most common mistake that students make is not giving their opinion. The question will clearly state that you must choose one side of the argument to agree with. If you fail to do this, you will get low score for task achievement. It doesn't matter which side of the argument you take or even that you actually agree with it. However, you must give equal attention to both sides. A common error is to provide a stronger argument for the view you, you favor. This leads to an unbalanced essay and a low score for task achievement. So now let's look at the essay structure, sorry. So let's look at this essay structure that you can use to write IELTS discussion essays. It's not the only possible structure, but it's the, the one I recommend because it's easy to learn and will enable you to quickly plan and write a high level essay. So let's see. In the introduction, you start by paraphrasing the question and then you have to state the two supporting reasons. So you will have to actually add one supporting reason for one of the view and another supporting reason for the second view. And then you will have to include your opinion again. Not again, I'm sorry, the first time. We haven't included yet. So you need to include your opinion. So you can actually merge your feed of the statement with the outline statement. The feed of the statement means the opinion and the outline sentence is where you actually state the two supporting reasons, okay? So that's the structure. And I've actually, I've talked about, um, you know, this specific structure in the previous um, uh, uh, video when I started talking about uh, opinion essays. So how to paraphrase, um, let me just remember you, uh, let me just remind you of how to paraphrase professionally. If you want to paraphrase, it's about replacing most of the words or the majority of words with different words that have the same meaning 
And that's what we call synonyms. So you will have to rely on using synonyms in order to paraphrase professionally and proficiently. Okay? And if you, if you can't find a synonym of some of the words, you can keep them as it is. Okay? You can keep these words as they are without making any change or any transformation. Or even if you can, you can change the order of the sentence or you can even change the verb tenses. For example, if you find something that is written as a noun, you can transform it into a verb, or you can actually try to transform the active form into passive form. Okay, you can do that. It's still called paraphrasing. So don't stress about the specific part. I will actually be uploading a video explaining all the strategies of how to paraphrase professionally and accurately. So as you can see, that's the introduction. We paraphrase the question, and then, and then you will have to state the two supporting reason, and then you have to give your own opinion. You, 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 don't, you don't have to actually follow the order of opinion and the two supporting reasons. You can start by your opinion, and then you can state the two supporting reasons, or you can just merge them into one sentence. I'll be showing you a standardized or like a standard introduction to follow, because, you know, so many, a lot of students actually take a lot of time to write the introduction because they can't actually find the perfect sentence. I will be showing you a standard structure to be able to sum up the time and to cut off more the um, extra timing that might affect you to finish on time, okay? So let's just move to the main body paragraph one. So in the main body paragraph, as you can see, the main body paragraph consists of three parts, topic sentence, explanation, and example. So as you can see in the topic sentence, you need to outline the view you don't agree with. So for example, you, now, by now, you should have written your opinion in the essay. So your opinion would be actually siding with one of the view. So in the main body paragraph, you, you have to actually start, it's not you have, but it's preferable to start by the view you don't agree with. So now in the topic sentence, you have to outline the view you don't agree with. And that is the supporting reason that you have already stated in the introduction. It's the same one, but in here, in the main body paragraph, you have to write it in your own way. So you can just change some words. You can just add more information to it, not more ideas, just more information to it, to expand on it, whatever you want. But you just have to beautify the topic sentence here. And then you have to explain why this view is held by some people. And then you have to give an example. That's the main body paragraph one. And then you move to the main body paragraph two, topic sentence, explanation, and you have to give an example as well. In the topic sentence, you need to outline the view you agree with. So the same supporting reason that you have already written in the introduction, now you write it in your own way, as I told you. And then you explain why this view is held by some people, and then you give an example. Okay, and for the example section, you can make up something. So you can just rely on something experience. Sorry, uh, you can rely on some personal experience or you can just try to make up things. For example, a study held in the UK or a study was carried out in the UK proved that 34% of the pe of people, blah, blah, blah. You can make up percentages. You can make up location as long as it's believable. The examiner is not going to check your facts. He's not going to Google the information to, to check out if this, if, the, if this is right or wrong. He doesn't care. He just wants you to write something that would support your explanation and topic sentence. That's it. So, so don't worry about this. And then we move to the conclusion section where you have to summarize the key points and state your opinion. So in the conclusion, well, you summarize the key points and state your opinion. So the main ideas or the main supporting reason that you have already mentioned and elucidated or elaborated on during the essay, now you have to write it in your own way with more paraphrasing, and then you, you have to restate your opinion again. It's very important for you to restate your opinion in the conclusion, okay? Or you can simply paraphrase the introduction. Many students lack this strategy or they have no idea about this strategy. If you want to be on the safe side, it's better to paraphrase the introduction to ensure that you are writing a full, full, you know, um, professional conclusion. So this structure will give us a well-balanced essay with four paragraphs. We now need some ideas to add into the structure and we will, we will have everything we need for our essay.
how to plan an IELTS discussion essays. First of all, you need to analyze the question. This is an essential step in the planning process and will ensure that you answer the question fully. It's a quick and easy to do. You just need to identify three different types of words. So we have topic words, other keywords, and instruction words. We have already considered the instruction words, the actual question, so we will focus on the first two. Topic words are the ones that identify the general subject of the question. For example, here, some people think that zoos are cool and should be closed down. Others, however, believe that zoos can be useful in protecting wild animals. As you can see, the topic word, the main topic word in our question is zoos. So, this, so the question is about zoos. Many people do this first step of the process and then write about the topic in general. This is a serious mistake and leads to low marks for task achievement. What we need to do now that, that we know the general topic is to understand exactly what aspect of Zeus we are being asked to write about. So the other keywords in the question tell you specific topic you must write about. They define the opinions stated in the statement. So for example here, some people think that Zeus are cruel and should be closed down. Others, however, believe that zoos can be useful in the protecting wild animals. As you can see, we have the first view with the cruel closed down, and we have useful in the protecting wild animals. So these are key words that you need to focus on. By highlighting these words, it's easy to see that you are being asked to write about the opposing views that zoos are cruel and should be closed down, and that zoos can be useful in the protecting wild animals. So your essay must and include ideas relevant to these ideas. The second step is you need to decide on your opinion. As already mentioned, it doesn't matter if you genuinely agree with the view you take in your essay or not. IELTS discussion essays are about your ability to write a well-structured essay in the English language, and you will not be assessed on any opinion you might hold. So choose one of you and make sure that your opinion is clear th throughout the essay. For this model essay, I'm going to agree with the statement that zoos are cruel and should be closed down. So I decided on my opinion. Now we need to generate ideas. The next task is to generate some ideas to write about. There are, we are going to use the French technique. This is my preferred, actually my preferred method. As, as it allows you to take a step back from the stress of the exam situation and think more calmly. Here is how it works. Imagine you are chatting with a friend and they ask you the question in a casual conversation. What answers would you give them off? You know, what, what actually answers would you give them off the top of your head? Plan your essay around these ideas. Doing this will help you to come up with simple answers in everyday language rather than straining your brain to think of amazing ideas using high level language, which is not necessary. You might want to try this yourself before reading on for my ideas. So don't complicate things. Try to act like you are having a conversation with someone and try to ask yourself these questions to see what could you answer. You can ask, you can ask this question in your first, these questions in your first language that would make things easier for you. And then you'll have just to translate your ideas, okay? So here, here, are, my, here are my ideas. For the, first, for the first of you that says, zoos are cruel and should be closed down, I'm just trying to brainstorm right now. So let's see some supporting reasons of this, why should be closed down, because they are cramped cages and that would make animals distressed, because these are unnatural environments, because most animals not endangered are not endangered. Endangered means they are under threat from extinction. So why are we having zoos if these animals are not endangered? So endangered is an adjective. Animals, because animals become a public spectacle for entertainment. Spectacle means everyone is looking at it. So it's like, um, it's like a scene for everyone. It's like when you make a scene. Okay, that's what, that's what we call spectacle. So we have a lot of ideas for the first view, or actually a lot of supporting reason, reasons for the first view. Now let's 
keep thinking about more supporting reasons for the second view, the opposing view that actually support zoos by saying that the zoos are useful in protecting wild animals. Why? Because some research work to learn more about what wild animals. So this idea is supporting that, okay, we can do some research to learn more about the wild animals, or we can do some breeding programs for endangered species. Some species save from extinction. Seeing wild animals close up inspires people to want to help protect them. So all of these supporting reasons are quite supportive to the second opposing view, which why zoos are useful in protecting wild animals. So now I've got more ideas than I need. So I'm going to pick two to develop in my essay, one for each of the main body paragraphs. The first idea I'm going to choose is for, that's, that's a supporting reason for the first view of why zoos are cruel and should be closed down. I'm going to say because we have cramped cages and unnatural environments, and that would actually put the animals under stress. Idea number two, which is the supporting reason for the second view, breeding programs for endangered species, some species saved from extinction. Amazing. They are very relevant and very supportive to the actual uh, views, okay? So now we are almost ready to start writing our IELTS discussion essay. But first, we have one other small task to do, vocabulary. In an IELTS essay, it's important to be able to say the same things in different ways, either by paraphrasing and or using synonyms. During the planning stage, quickly jot down a few synonyms of keywords you could use to save you, um, you could use to save you having to stop and think of the right language while you are writing. For example, instead, before I move to this, I have to actually give you a, like a top tip. You need to avoid the petition during the essay. Try to do this as much as you can. So we have, a, as you can see, we have the word zoos or the word zoo. You might use this word a lot or frequently during the essay. Don't do this. You can replace it with a lot of words. For example, animals in captivity, collections of wild animals, menagerie or wildlife park, for example. And instead of using cruel all the time, you can say to cause suffering in a human, Instead of protect, you can use safeguard, preserve. Instead of animals, you can say creatures or species or species. You know, we have two pronunciations for the word species or species. So with that done, we can focus on the first paragraph of the, of the essay, which is the introduction. How to write an introduction. Good introductions to IELTS discussion essays have a simple three-part structure. Paraphrase the question, as I mentioned earlier, state the two supporting reason, and that's what we call outline statement, and then give your opinion, and that's what we call theater state statement. And as I told you, you can, you, uh, you don't have to follow the order of two and three. So you can start by your opinion and finish by, your, by, by, by the outline statement or the two supporting reasons, or you can merge them into one sentence. So it should have two to three sentences, be 40 to 60 words long, and take five minutes to write. That's, that's how the introduction um, should be written. So you, you will need to take about five times, five, sorry, about five minutes. So take first, when you read the question, take about five minutes to decide on your opinion, to think about supporting reasons for every single of you, and even to think about examples for every single idea. You will need to think forward because these ideas are going to be used or are going to be explained in the main body paragraphs. So when you think about specific idea, try to, all, to also think about an example. And that's, that's all happening before writing the introduction. So try to do all of that. Try to even focus on the vocabulary before you start. Try to think about uh, different synonyms or different words and to avoid repetition. You will need to do all of this in about five to seven minutes before you start writing. Trust me, if you do this, you will finish even before time. I'm telling you. That's completely guaranteed. So the first step of writing an introduction is paraphrasing the question. So start your introduction by paraphrasing the question. So that's the question again. Some people think that zoos are cruel and should be closed down. Others, however, believe that zoos can be useful in protecting wild animals. 
discuss by the views and give your own opinion. There are various phases you can use phases. Sorry, there are, there are various phases you can use to do this. Here are the e three examples. They all say the same thing using different language. So you can start your introduction by some people argue that while others say that. Or you can start by it's considered by some blah, blah, blah. That's the first view. While there, while there are others who think blah, blah, blah. And that's the other view. Or you can even start by it's often argued that blah, blah, blah. Whilst others disagree and think blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the word whilst actually is an academic, is an academic wording of the word while. So they have, they both have the same meaning. Okay, so choose one and add the details in the question statement in a paraph paraphrase form. I recommend putting the view you don't agree with first. I always recommend that. So let's paraphrase the question now. That's the question. So some people argue that zoos, so we added this. So some people argue that zoos help to preserve wild creatures. As you can see, preserve wild creatures instead of protecting wild animals. As you can see, we changed the order, okay? He started by the view he, don't, he doesn't agree with. You can do that. You can start, it's better to start by the view that you don't agree with. So as you can see, it says, some people argue that zoos help to preserve wild creatures, while others say that they are inhuman and should be abolished. So we completely paraphrase the question. As you can see, he used the word preserve instead of protect, protecting. He used the word wild creatures instead of wild animals here. And also he used the word inhuman instead of cruel, and he used the word abolished instead of closed down, to abolish something, to take it, take it down or to close it down. Amazing paraphrasing, as you can see. Not my use of synonyms, you don't have to replace every keyword, but do, do so where possible while ensuring that your language sounds natural. There aren't any suitable synonyms of zoo that I can think of. So I've repeated this word from the statement. Yes, you can repeat the same word. Many people wouldn't be able to find a synonym of the word zoo. You can keep it as it is, it's fine. So now let's just move to the second part of the introduction, which is the feeders and outline statement. So as you can see here, we merged them into one sentence. So now we need to add an outline statement where you outline the two main points that you will cover in the rest of the essay, ideas one and two above, and the previous statement where you state your opinion. So outline and previous statement. So we merged them together. It says, while the development of breeding programs contributes to the preservation of endangered species, I believe that poor conditions that many animals held in captivity are kept in make the existence of zoos unacceptable. So in the outline and previous statement, he started by while, and then the supporting reason of the view that he doesn't agree with, and then he wrote, I believe that, and then the supporting reason of the view you agree with. If you try to follow this structure, you would sum up a lot, a lot of time, and you would ensure as you know, an introduction of band eight. I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I'm not just giving giving up words. Or I'm not just throwing off words. No, I'm just telling the truth. So as you can see here, if we just let's bring all the three elements together in the introduction. As you can see, so we started by some people argue that, uh, while others say blah blah. So if you follow, if you use these words in your introduction, that would be amazing. So he started by some people argue, and then the view that you don't agree with, while others, while others say the view you agree with. That's how we paraphrase the question. And then you start by while, supporting reason of the view you don't agree with, and then you write, and then you write I believe that, and then you write the supporting reason of the view you agree with. Now let's do the introduction together. 
Some people argue that zoos help to preserve wild creatures, while others say that they are inhuman and should be abolished. While the development of breeding programs contributes to the preservation of endangered species, I believe that the poor conditions that many animals held in captivity are kept in make the existence of zoos unacceptable. That's a thorough introduction, and this introduction achieves three important functions. It shows the examiner that you understand the question, it acts as a guide to the examiner as to what your essay is about, and it also helps to keep you focused and on track as you write. So the two ideas in your introduction will become your two main body paragraphs. The main body paragraph one now will be about breeding programs for endangered species, some species say from extinction, and the main body paragraph two will be about cramped cages and unnatural environments, animals distress. And these two ideas for these two supporting reasons have been already written in the introduction. So as I mentioned earlier, it's better to start the main body paragraph one with the view that you don't agree with. So now let's move to the body paragraphs. How to write main body paragraphs? Main body paragraphs in IELTS discussion essays should contain three things. Three things. Topic sentence where you outline the view you don't agree with. Explanation, I'm now I'm talking about the main body paragraph one. And that explanation where you explain this, this view or explain why this view is held by some people and then you have to give an example. It's easier to begin by discussing the opinion you don't agree with and then present the reasons for the opposing view that you support. So we'll start with idea one which is that one here. So the main body paragraph one, the topic sentence summarizes the main idea of the paragraph. That's all it needs to do so. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It plays an important role in, in ensuring that your ideas flow logically from one to another. It does this by acting as a sign past for what is to come next. That is what the paragraph will be about. If you maintain a clear development of ideas throughout your essay, you will get high marks for task achievement, cohesion, and coherence. We will now take the idea for our first main body paragraph and create our topic sentence. So the first main body paragraph will be about breeding programs for endangered species, some species saved from extinction. So let's see the topic sentence. Do you want me to, re to remind you of how to write in topic sentence? The topic sentence is the same one. It's the supporting reason of the view that was already written in the introduction, but now you have to write it in your own way. So you just have to beautify it. You just have to add more words to it or do more paraphrasing to it. Just You, you just need to make it more clear, clearer, more obvious. So let's see. On the one hand, how beautiful is this conjunction word? I assume that he started, or we actually, I, I started with using this conjunction word, guess why? Because this conjunction word actually, so if you start by on, on the one hand, then in the second body paragraph, you, you will start by on the other hand, because these two paragraphs are opposing, are opposed. Do you get it? So let's see, on the one hand, there are many projects in existence in zoological parks. So he used zoological parks instead of zoos around the world where the species facing extinction have been successfully bred in captivity and the numbers increase substantially. Substantially means um, uh, significantly. So okay, significantly. So that's the meaning of substantially. So as you can see, that's the topic sentence. That's the same supporting reason that was written in the, in the introduction, but now you just I just wrote it in my own way. Next, we must write an explanation sentence that expands on the idea. This explains to the examiner what, what we mean or why this is the case. So now let's see the explanation sentence. This is important for ensuring the survival of animals under threat from poaching and the destruction of the natural environments. Amazing explanation. So that's important to ensure the survival of animals under threat from poaching. Poaching means wild hunting. When you go to the wild and start hunting, and that's what we call poaching. Poaching is another synonym of hunting. So 
and the destruction of their natural environment. So he's trying to support this topic sentence, which, which is why zoos are useful. He explained why. Now let's move to the example sentence. So finally, we add an example to support our main point. If you can't think of a real example, it's fine to make one up as long as it's believable. The examiner is not going to check your facts. So let's see the example sentence here. A good example of this is the golden lion tamarind from Brazil, which nearly died out. Died out means nearly um, got disappeared. Okay, so nearly died out because of logging and mining activities. Logging, you know, when you cut trees, so when you cut off trees and start building and start constructing buildings, that's what we call logging activities. Mining activities is when you dig mines. Okay, so I, because of logging and mining activities, which are destroying its habitat, that's what we call the harm of animals or plants. We call it habitat. It's an amazing word to use. Today, a third of wild golden tamarinds were raised in captivity. So raised in captivity means we're being placed in a zoo. So he's supporting his idea. So as you can see, he started about a topic sentence. He explained why is it useful, and then he gave an example to support his, explana his explanation and the topic sentence as well. So that's the three parts of our first main body paragraph complete. Here is the finished paragraph. So let's read the finished paragraph together. So as you can see, we have the topic sentence, we have the explanation here, and then we have the example in here. So on the one hand, there are many projects in existence in zoological parks around the world where species facing extinction have been successfully bred in captivity and their numbers increased substantially. This is important for ensuring the survival of animals under threat from parching and the destruction of their natural environments. A good example of this is the golden lion tamarind from Brazil, which nearly died out because of logging and mining activities, which are destroying its habitat. Today, a third of wild golden tamarinds were raised in captivity. We now follow the same process for our second main body paragraph. So main body paragraph two. So uh, the main idea will be about cramped cages and unnatural environments, animals distressed. Okay, so first we write the topic sentence to summarize the main idea. I started main body paragraph one with the phrase on the one hand, so main body paragraph two will naturally begin on the other hand. These are the great cohesive devices to use when making a direct contrast between two opposing views and they link the ideas together well. They can be used in most IELTS discussion essays and will help to earn you a good score for cohesion and coherence. So that's, that, that's, that's very important. So when you start your first body paragraph by a conjunction word, for example, on the one hand, it's important to actually start, if you don't start by conjunction word, it's actually so recommended to start the second main body paragraph by, by a conjunction word to show the contrast between the two body paragraphs. So you can start the, the second body paragraph by in contrast or in contrary or whatever. So let's see the topic sentence of the second body paragraph. On the other hand, a significant percentage of zoos house their animals in cramped cages with very little space to move around or behave naturally. Amazing. So that's the topic sentence of the second main body paragraph, which is the same that was written in the introduction, but now you write it in your own way. You make it clearer, more obvious. So now for the explanation sentence where we expand on this where, where we expand on this idea. So let's see. This can lead to them becoming distressed and depressed, as well as suffering physically through lack of exercise. I have explained my idea or my supporting reason. Now let's move to the example sentence. A friend of mine recently visited a wildlife park while on holiday abroad and was very upset to see the lions pacing up and down in a narrow bear pen and eagles in enclosures so small that they were unable to fly. 
So that's the three parts of our second main body paragraph complete. Here is the finished paragraph now. Oh, before I, yes, let's just read it together. On the other hand, a significant percentage of zoos house their animals. As you can see, house here is a verb. House their animals in cramped cages with very little space to move around or behave naturally. This can lead to them becoming distressed and depressed as well as suffering physically through lack of exercise. That's the explanation. A friend of mine recently visited a wildlife park while on holiday abroad and was very upset to see the lions pacing up and down. So pacing up and down, it's like, you know, um, moving around, moving around uh, with, with, without stop. In a narrow bare pen, so the pen is the room that is, um, that's where um, they place the animals. So that's, that's, that, that's, that's what we call a pen. Bare means empty. So bare pen and eagles in enclosures, enclosures mean cages, so small, that they were that they were unable to fly. So amazing topic sentence, amazing explanation, and a beautiful, beautiful example sentence, very relevant to the actual explanation and topic sentence. Now we need to we need the conclusion, and our IELTS discussion essay is done. So how to write the conclusion? Conclusions to IELTS discussion essay should do two things: summarize the main points and stay to the opinion. This can generally be done in a single sentence. If you are below the minimum of 250 words after you have written your conclusion, you can add prediction or a recommendation statement, okay? So I, the conclusion is the easiest sentence in the essay to write, but one of the most important. A good conclusion will neatly end the essay link all your ideas together and sum up your argument or opinion. So, I, and also answer the question. If you achieve this, you will improve your score for both task achievement, coherence and coherence, coherence and cohesion, which together make up 50% of the overall marks. Without the conclusion, you will score below band six for task achievement. So be careful and don't miss the conclusion section. You can, you can start almost any final paragraph of, of an IELTS discussion essay with the words in conclusion or to conclude. Now all you need to do is briefly summarize the main ideas into one sentence. Here is a top tip. Go back and do the introduction to the essay because this is also a summary of the essay. It outlines what you are going to write about. To create a good or a great conclusion, you simply have to paraphrase the introduction, as I mentioned earlier. So let's give it a go. So the introduction, that's the introduction. You can read it again. I'm gonna give you some time to read the introduction again. Okay, so now let's move to the conclusion to see how they paraphrased it. In conclusion, although zoos do help to safeguard dwindling populations of particular species, the suffering experienced by many captive creatures due to unsuitable living conditions amounts to cruelty. Amounts to means due to or because of. Amounts to cruelty, so amounts to is like a verb amounts to cruelty and they should not be allowed to exist. Amazing paraphrasing of the introduction. Paraphrasing is something very important to learn. I will be uploading a video explaining how to paraphrase greatly and professionally. So that's it. We have completed our essay. Here is the four paragraphs put together. In so that's the, that's the full essay. So let's see, we have 267 words, amazing. So we have actually, we've, we've, we've written more than 250 words. So we are on the safe side. As you can see, we have four paragraphs, one, two, three, four. Uh, we have the introduction, paraphrase, and then we have the outline sentence merged 
with the previous statement. And then we have the first uh, uh, main body paragraph, which starts with the, with the view that you don't agree with. Topic sentence, explanation and example. Same for the second main body paragraph. We start by a topic sentence for the view you, you agree with now, and then you give an, and then you explain, and then you give an example, and then you have the conclusion where you just have to paraphrase the introduction. Okay, so I, that's the writing essay for um, that's a sample actually answer for um, discussion essays. I hope that you have fully understood this lesson. Please don't hesitate to message me if you have any questions about it or if you have any um, sort of, um, you know, um, if you are questioning yourself about specific points, you can actually, say, uh, you know, just comment in this, just comment, uh, drop a comment in the section, in the comment section. And um, guess, so that's the discussion essay. And um, uh, it might be challenging for some of the students to, uh, uh, to try to, uh, to, to actually apply the strategy thoroughly, but please try to go back to the video, keep watching until you fully understand, comprehend and memorize the strategy. I don't recommend, recommend to memorize any strategy, but it's the one I recommend to ensure a high band score. This structure would guarantee a band seven plus. I'm telling you, I'm not joking with you. I'm not playing on words. I'm just telling the truth, okay? So try to go back to the video and watch it again until you fully understand this talk shop. I wanna thank you so much for sticking with me to the whole video, okay? So please don't hesitate to actually comment um, any question that you might be wondering of. I will be replying to you personally or individually. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and activate the bell button to help receive all my upcoming videos. I will be highlighting the other question types. So as you know, um, I've uploaded, that's the second video of me um, explaining about uh, writing task two. So I've covered the opinion essay. In this video, I just covered the discussion essays. We still have the problem solution essays, advantages and disadvantages essay, and finally the double question or the direct question essays. And you will actually notice that um, I, you know, um, I'm quite using the same structure with most of these questions, but I try to always stick around. If you don't have, if you have some difficulty writing an opinion essay, go back to my previous video and watch it again. Don't forget to do this. Thank you so much, so much for watching this video. And I look forward to seeing you again on my platform. Have a beautiful and amazing day, wherever you are.